It's about damn time for a video on this channel, right? So, fun fact. I filmed this video once before, last Friday, and it is Wednesday today. I'm here to refilm it, which is just so sad when that happens. That hasn't happened to me in a while. Turns out my camera was broken and I filmed the whole thing blurry, didn't realize till after, and had to wait to get a new camera in the mail because you can only order it, you can't get it on Amazon. So anyway, here we are, we're refilming. It's gonna be so much better. You know, everything happens for a reason, it's okay. It, I wasn't meant to post that video. It has been a while and for that reason I thought that that it would be fun to do a Q&A. I just feel like I haven't talked to you guys in a while. I haven't like caught up with you. We haven't just sat down and chatted, done a Q&A in so long. I feel like I haven't done one in a year, which is crazy. I wanna do them more often. So I asked you guys on Instagram to ask some questions and we're gonna do that. But yeah, I missed you guys. I hope you guys are doing well. How are you? I missed you so much. I haven't vlogged since Stagecoach. That's really bad. Starting off strong. Why haven't you uploaded a main channel video in so long? <laughs> I don't even know how long it's been. I, don't, I haven't looked at that channel in a while. I think the last video on there is a drunk Q&A type of thing with Tila and I, I, here's the thing. This is serious, you guys, and I need your input, opinions. I've been thinking and I wish I would have just merged the chant, not merged, but started vlogging on my main channel earlier and like just had one channel. I just want one channel, okay? <laughs> I just don't feel the need for myself anymore to have two channels because I'm not like doing those like DIY challenge videos. I just really like vlogging. I find it personally my favorite type of video to make and I just, I vlog now. I don't, I don't do those types of videos anymore, so it's just kind of hard. And if I do do those drunk Q&As with Tila, that could have been a vlog channel type of thing too. I just feel like I could have one channel and it would be fine, but now I feel like it's too late to start vlogging on that channel. And I feel bad for this channel because like then it would what, just go to waste? But that channel has more subscribers, it, it has more of an audience, but I'm like, wait, does this channel have new people now that aren't even subscribed to that channel? Which is probably, yes, there's probably new people here from like more recent videos. I don't know, I don't know. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, I feel like a lot of people a few years ago did that transition where they started vlogging on their main channel and that was their only channel because it has the audience, it has more viewers and stuff. And I just wanna know, should I do that or is it too late? I feel like if I did it two years ago, it would have been a good time to do it, but now I don't know if it's too late, too far gone, like, I don't know. And then I just feel like that channel's gone to waste even though it has more of an audience. So I just feel awkward. Does this make sense? Does this make sense? Are you guys subscribed to that channel? Would you guys watch it? I just want one channel. I. I just feel like it's pointless that I have two channels and then I'm only using the one with less of an audience. So I just feel like I should have just switched over years ago. My lip combo. Well, I'm glad you asked. So my lip combo today is actually um, Nova Beauty. They came, Fashion Nova came out with a beauty line and I really like it. But other than that, usually I'm wearing Pillow Talk Medium, which is the darker shade of Pillow Talk. Probably just Pillow Talk dabbed on, on top of that or clear gloss or chapstick or Iconic Nude or by Charlotte Tilbury or Anywhere Caffeine by Makeup Forever. Those are my top lip liners or I'll do like a lip oil. That's what I use on my lips. <laughs> okay, next question. When is your next trip and where are you going? As of right now, the next trip that we have planned is Europe again, a bunch of places in Europe this summer. I think we are gonna leave around June 28th, so literally not that far away. A couple, like three and a half weeks away. And I'm so, so excited. I'm so excited. I had so much fun. This year we're going to fly into London for a few days and then we're gonna do all of south of France. I think we're gonna stay on a boat for that, which would be really, really cool. We're going to Mykonos again and Santorini, which I've never been to Santorini, so that'll be cool to experience. After that, I think we're doing the Amalfi Coast. That is the one place I've wanted to go and I've never been. I've been to Italy, just not the, the like southern part of Italy. So really excited and I think that's it. I think that's all of our travel plans, but that's like gonna be like a three week long trip. I'm mentally preparing. I'm gonna vlog again. It's gonna be really good. Okay, here we go. 
there was a lot of questions obviously about just like what I'm doing and like my future and also a lot of questions about my boyfriend's house renovations and if I'm gonna sell my house just a lot of questions about the near future and what's happening in my life kind of thing or are you moving in with your boyfriend what's happening with his house renovations because i showed you guys so much of that in a few vlogs and are you gonna live together soon like what is going on with all of that there's just so many questions about that so i feel like i should answer i'm gonna cover each point let's start off with when are you fully gonna show us your boyfriend's house renovation so yeah i vlogged a lot about how i was helping my boyfriend renovate his house so that he could sell it because it's it was more of an investment. He got a really good price on it and obviously now is the time to sell. However, some things changed and he decided he doesn't want to like spend all this money on renovations and he just wants to sell it right now because it is not going to get any better. The housing market and he doesn't want to waste any time. So I'm really, really sad because I hyped it up so much. I hyped it up and I was so excited to like show you guys the whole renovation process. But... Sadly, we painted the walls, so we, we did that. They're white now. I can show you guys what we've done. It's just not as extravagant as it was gonna be of a resident, like it's more just like little things. So we painted the walls, we painted the cabinets like professionally, like they actually do look really good. I just ordered new hardware for all the cabinets, so that should be in this week. I feel like I should vlog this. Cause it is still like a renovation, but just not as drastic. <laughs> so got that. And then I think we're painting the outside of the house too. So that'll be a big change. I think that's it. Maybe a few lighting fixtures, but we are literally trying to get this house on the market in the next two weeks before we leave to Europe for sure. So that is what's going on with that. And once he sells that house, there's a lot up in the air right now in my life. And I just kind of hate that. Like I hate not knowing what's gonna happen, but at the same time, like it's fine. It's like a transitional part of my life. I just feel like right now. And I just gotta learn to go with the flow. I don't want to sell my house yet because I kind of just want to like rent it out. We'll live together somewhere and then I'll rent out my house, make money, either Airbnb. I feel like my house is a very good Airbnb because it's just so close to everything. You know, I can make money, easy, passive income. So I don't know, he might live with me for a few months before we find like a house that we can live in together and or, and or buy together. But I also told him I don't want to live with him until we're engaged. So that's like a whole other story so there's just as i said a lot up in the air right now are we gonna end up living together soon yes and am i selling my house no yeah that's all i know we have a few advice questions which i always love because you know i just want to talk about me the whole video you gotta we gotta give advice so the question is any advice for a girl after going through a long-term relationship breakup and still struggling a year later so she went through a breakup a year ago and she's still struggling to kind of get over it and move on. The advice I would give is that's, first of all, that's totally normal. I feel like, I feel like everyone's just like, I'm fine. Like, I don't care at all. Like, I'm just living my life. I'm working out every day. I'm making amazing meals and I'm distracting myself, which you know, you gotta do to distract yourself, but it is totally fine to be like, you know what, I am not good at being single. I know I'm not. Like, I think it's necessary. Being single is definitely necessary in life. Like, when people tell me they have only been single for like a few months at a time and they're like just serial daters, I just, that's a huge red flag. Not a red flag, but it's just something to think about because being when you're single, that's when you learn the most about yourself and it's when you grow the most as an individual on your own with no help from a significant other to lean on. Because, you know, if you're not secure on your own and happy on your own, there's no way you're gonna like be able to have like give love to someone else and if you don't love yourself you know it's that whole thing so it's just it's really necessary to be single i know I, I had a lot of anxiety when i was single not because i wasn't okay with being single i was living my life and it was fine but again like i said sometimes uncertainty and not knowing where your life is going can be tough it's totally normal i was anxious a lot when i'm single and that's where the distracting yourself does come into play not in an unhealthy way 
way, but in a bettering yourself way. So going to the gym, working out, hanging out with friends. I know I always had plans with friends when I was single, which is really, really good. And that's how it should be. Those are ways that are gonna help you cope with maybe like you're feeling anxious or like it's hard. You keep thinking about the person and you're feeling sad, but doing those things does help. Not in an unhealthy way, like I said, like don't push those feelings down and like mask them with like, I'm the baddest bitch ever and I'm working out every single day. And does this, does this make sense? I think I'm rambling, oh no. This is really hard filming a video twice because I feel like I've already said things in the video I already filmed and now I don't know what I'm saying. Basically, just know that you're not alone. It's not weird to still feel this way. I felt that way, not because I was sad or I missed the person, just because I didn't like the uncertainty in my life and the unknown. Just try to surround yourself with friends and family. You know, therapy never hurts. Just ultimately focusing on yourself and bettering yourself mentally and physically because that is so necessary. Once you kind of realize that, like it'll all make sense. Just really like appreciate the moment that you're in because yeah, you just want to go to the next thing or like you're, you're reminiscing about the past, but you just need to step back and really focus on where you at in your life presently. The present time, the moment that you're in, in your life, you're gonna miss that one day. Just remember that. Be present. <laughs> okay. Moving on, moving on. This person asked to do a boyfriend does my makeup video or a drunk video with your boyfriend. Honestly, I feel like maybe it is time to do some sort of video with my boyfriend. I just feel like it's so weird that I, I just feel weird. I don't know. I don't like need to, but at the same time, maybe I should so like you guys get to know another part of my life. I just feel like there's just this part of my life that I just don't show and that's fine but it has been a while like we've been, almost been dating two years so maybe it's time for the hard launch I don't know I don't know is it time for the hard launch let me know if so what kind of video would you want to see I mean we love getting drunk so maybe that but also I always do love keeping that part private because the second you show it you're vulnerable and you're putting yourself out there for judgment and that's never fun so who knows but you know, probably I will do that eventually, soon in the near future, but I don't know. I don't know. Next question is funny. How is your Birkin journey going? And I just had to talk about this because you know I love the topic of Birkins and Hermes and the craziness that it is. Um, some people like totally might not even care about this, but I do, okay? I do and it, I think it's very entertaining. The journey is going, if you asked me this last week, I answered a little differently. I said it's not going too well. I like haven't gone to the store in a while. My I feel like my sales associate doesn't even like me or care about me or for, he forgot about me. I did buy this pillow in St. Bart's when we were just there because this pillow is hard to find and I was trying to maybe see if they had any Birkins in St. Bart's because it's a travel destination. Sometimes they do that, but she said no. They don't get like many shipments, so she didn't have any apparently. Um, but I did get that pillow, which is cool too because it's hard to find. But just yesterday I did text my Hermes sales associate. We love him. I wanted to come in. I'm going in on Friday, you guys. I don't think anything crazy is gonna happen, but I, I just wanted to make an appointment to go into the store and you know catch up with him if you guys have no idea what like I'm talking about basically it's really hard to get a Birkin and it's like an interesting game that you have to play and I'm trying to play that game right now it's kind of fun like it's fun it's entertaining so anyway I bought some shoes from him while I was texting him because he said he could ship them to my house they're the new like fuzzy Aran sandals that are colorful so those are coming tomorrow and then Friday, I'm going to the store. Then he asked if I liked this um, little Rodeo charm that are really popular for people to put on their Birkins. And this is a really, like one of my favorite color combinations, but obviously I don't have a Birkin. So he sent me that and he was like, do you like this? And I was like, oh my God, is that these colors? He was like, yes. And I was like, I love. And then I said, if only I had a Birkin to put it on, laughy face. And then, and then he's in a little silly, goofy mood. He said, LOL with a smiley face. And that was like the farthest I've gotten with even asking about a Birkin. Like I've never even said the word Birkin to him. So my heart was racing, even though I didn't really ask, I just kind of like nudged and was like playful. And I think his little like response is cute. And like, you know, I don't know. Then he just said he would try to hold the charm thing for me till Friday. That was the end of that. So maybe I'll go on Friday and I'll be like, what are the chances 
you would have a Birkin for me before my Europe trip, you know? I don't know though. I'm, I get so scared when I'm actually in the store. I don't even know why. I just don't want to be annoying because I'm, I just know that they get asked so much. Like every day, everyone's like, do you have Birkin for me? Do you have Birkin? Like, I don't want to, like, I feel bad. So I almost just don't want to ask, but that way it was really natural and it was funny. So who knows? Maybe it'll be coming soon. I will let you guys know though. I will keep you updated on my journey. Y'all really want to know when I'm getting engaged and married. I, I, I don't know y'all. I'm not the one asking. I wouldn't know. I, I wouldn't know. What is your implant size and your doctor, please? So I feel like I've covered all of the like questions you would get about my boob job surgery and all the info about it in my past boob job vlogs so definitely go watch those if you haven't but just to update and do a more recent kind of answering questions about it actually they like are two years old now i got them done two years ago the implant size that i got is 275 and 290 like it was a different size because they make it more proportioned and the doctor i went to is just a doctor in beverly hills dr eugene kim same guy that ava went to and i like i like it i like him he was cool he does a good job that i don't think i actually have talked about my doctor so yeah other than that i'm really happy with them and you know, I know they, there's like a lot of controversy, you know, about implant illness, which I haven't experienced, thank God. I mean, it's only been two years, but I'm super happy with my decision. I love them so much and do whatever is best for you. I, yeah, I don't know. I, no one even asked me. Never mind. No one asked me my opinions on boob jobs. Just the size, so we're gonna move on. A lot of people ask what birth control I, I am on and what kind it is. So I think I've talked about this before, but I'm on birth control right now that I you can only get in Canada. And sadly, that is about to change because my doctor was like, you need to find a doctor in America. Also, this birth control, you know, like it can cause blood clots and situations but like don't they all have their issues anyway but this was called diane 35 the one in canada and it is for acne and there's just one ingredient in it that is not fda approved here which is like so weird to me you would think usually medications are like a little more sketchy in america than in canada i i would usually trust canada more no, no offense, no offense. Just, you know, it's just like the bread situation in Europe, you know, when you're gluten intolerant, you can eat it there, but you can't in America because there's so much like stuff in it. Same kind of vibe that I would expect, but I guess not. So anyway, I need to find a new birth control. It needs to be for my skin. Like it has to have that ingredient. I think there's only like two or three in the States that are for acne specifically. And I think one of them is like Yaz, which I've heard like sketchy things about, I feel like, and then like try cycling something something is the other one if you guys have tried any of those let me know for your acne and let me know your thoughts because i need a new one and i'm deathly afraid of getting acne scars i'm scared i don't want i don't want acne another advice question and she asked how to deal with toxic in-laws toxic in-laws so that is a tricky one that can be detrimental to a relationship and I would really assess the situation. I personally have never had anyone's parents be toxic towards me per se. Definitely had some weird experiences with them being toxic and cray cray to my parents and family and just, yeah, all around weird situations. So in-laws are a touchy subject. Kind of. I am super grateful and happy and so lucky that my current boyfriend's parents are so freaking cool and I love them so much. They're, they might be watching. I feel like they watch my videos, which I don't know well, but hello. <laughs> so they're amazing. I get along really well with them. I just feel like they're very similar to my parents and like he was raised very similar to to how I was raised like I just feel like it's the same vibe and it's good we all get along and I feel like I can talk to them and I don't have to like watch what I say like they're just cool they're cool and that's the best you are literally when you're marrying your boyfriend or your husband you're marrying the in-laws the parents too like you're gonna have to be around them for a long time so if they're toxic or crazy that's never that's never fun that's never fun I would just say if you are experiencing something like that as long as your significant other has your back and you're the priority and you're number one, I feel like it can work. But if it's like making your relationship, like if it's affecting your relationship, that's when I would really reassess. 
because that's not gonna stop. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. I would just say that if you have boundaries, boundaries are your best friend. You have to have boundaries in all aspects of your life with all, re all relationships, even boundaries with your boyfriend. You need to set healthy boundaries. If you set these boundaries, with your in-laws and they are not respecting those boundaries or respecting you and your boyfriend's like not having your back, that's bad. Hopefully, if you set these healthy boundaries, it's good to do it at the beginning too of meeting them, but it's I feel like it's never too late. Like you need to set the boundaries, okay? Set the healthy boundaries. You and your partner are, are a team. That should be fine. Then again, like you're still gonna have to hang out with them at Christmas and <laughs> like Thanksgiving. So as long as you can, you're, as long as you're fine with that and you can find a good balance there, should be fine, but something to think about. Of course, she stopped recording. Next question is, what is your big three? Sun sign, moon sign, and rising sign. So I'm a Libra, that is my sun sign, that is my, my main bitch, <laughs> Libra. I feel like I'm definitely a Libra, like I'm, I've got a lot of Libra qualities to me. But then my moon sign is Capricorn and my rising is Scorpio. So I don't know, I don't know what that means. Do with that information as you wish, but <laughs> Capricorn, I've dated a Capricorn and one of my best friends is a Capricorn so that I don't know what that means and then Scorpio both of my sisters are Scorpios and I can see maybe I have a few Scorpio qualities in me like I can be a little cray cray I can be a little freaky deaky <laughs> I don't know so those are my signs we love and my boyfriend's sign I saw a question is Aries which we love because that is actually my sister sign which means if you guys didn't know sister signs are your exact opposite sign which is kind of interesting and so true me and my boyfriend are literally complete opposites but we balance each other out in the best way possible and i really think that's why we work so well together sister signs definitely look up what your sister sign is because i swear you just are gonna balance each other out so perfectly and you can learn from each other and i don't know i'm it's very interesting yeah Sister signs, we love. <laughs> Ooh, this is a juicy one. So this person said, what are your thoughts on signing a prenup if ever you decided to get married? I wanted to talk about this one because I just feel like this isn't a subject that's talked about a lot. It's kind of just an interesting topic to talk about because people don't really talk about it. I feel like I'm quite knowledgeable in the subject because I myself have had a prenup written up by a lawyer. Like I've paid thousands and thousands of dollars to lawyers to get a prenup. I just feel like they're a necessary thing and I feel like people take the subject to like sensitively. I don't know. <laughs> Here we go. I don't know. This might have controversy, but I just feel like if you're a business owner, an entrepreneur, or you've started something yourself from the ground up and it's successful, you need to protect yourself. And okay, a lot of people don't realize that prenups can change throughout the years of your, you being married. Like they can change in two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years. They can change when you have kids with the person. Like it's not like you sign a prenup and your husband cheats on you 20 years down the line and you have five kids and you're totally just fucked. <laughs> like you get nothing. You gave up your career for the person. That's really not the case because prenups are just, they're not like one prenup for everybody. Like everyone gets the same prenup. They are altered to what you want and what your needs are in the relationship relationship and the agreement and they also protect both sides. I feel like people don't realize like the prenup is for both sides. So what if in 10 years you do something in your career that makes you millions and millions of dollars, then you're protected as well. So, and I feel like that's, you know, relationships, they're like a balance beam. <laughs> like someone's, you know, it can go like this, if that, <laughs> if that makes sense. But anyway, I just feel like it can be kind of a red flag if someone doesn't want to sign one. Also, you can have it a prenup, you know, if someone cheats, then everything goes out the window. Like the person also can't be like, I'm just gonna cheat on them and I'm gonna get away with it. And you know, they're gonna be screwed for life 20 years into a marriage. So it doesn't like work like that. I feel like it is a little shady if someone doesn't want to sign it. Cause like, what are your intentions then? Like you, I don't know. 
I just don't think it hurts to sign a prenup. But if you like marry someone and then a year later they want a divorce from you and they never signed your prenup and they're trying to take all your money, like that's a little shady. So you know, you never know what's gonna happen. I mean, I know that personally I wanna be married for the rest of my life. I don't wanna get a fucking divorce. Hell no, that is not my goal in life. If I'm getting married, obviously I'm doing, I wanna do it one time. You know, that's why I think certain <laughs> engagements have been called off in the past because I don't wanna fail at my marriage. Like I want it to be very healthy and last forever. But at the same time, you know, life doesn't work that way. Life's not always 100% certain. You don't know what's gonna happen in 20 years from now. It's just best to protect yourself. I've had someone not wanna sign my prenup that I spent thousands of dollars for and it's a little shady. So <laughs> definitely, a, definitely a red flag for some people. I don't know. Yeah. That's, that's basically my thoughts. I don't know. Okay, I think that is all the questions I'm gonna answer today. I will do more of these if you guys want. Also, do you guys like YouTube Q&As better or IG story Q&As? Because, I mean, I feel like people do Q&As like every week and I'm like, don't people get bored of that? But then I'm like, should I be doing that? Cause I, I can totally do that. Cause I feel like life changes like weekly. So, I mean, there's always, questions to be answered but i don't know let me know your thoughts and yeah i hope you guys liked this video i missed you guys and i definitely want to vlog a lot more i mean summer is coming there's a lot of fun content to be recorded and i want to show you guys my boyfriend's house still and what we're going to be ending up doing with all of that and where i'm going to be living and where is he living with me i don't know but yeah i love you guys so much and i will see you in the next video bye guys